Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us today. So we have a mom that just had her baby and she's here in the barn. She actually had her baby last night. Came out this morning at about six o'clock and uh, she had a large single male. He's doing fine. He was actually already dried off up and nursing. We have lots of videos that will actually show you how to deal with newborns as far as delivery is concerned. But we kind of want to talk about after that, after the baby's born, what is it that we need to do? And what is it that's important? Well, when it comes to, I don't want to spook her uh, by getting too close, but basically when it comes to your newborn lambs or goat kids, and they're both the same for all intents and purposes, there's three main things that we need to consider. And that is, can the lamb or the goat kid get up and move around? If they can get up and move around, that's, that's one of the things that they absolutely have to be able to do. They need to be able to get out of the way and get into the way. That is to say, they need to be able to get milk off of mom. Second point is that in in fact, they need to be able to get that colostrum off of mom. That colostrum, be it off of mom or the kind that you buy from the store, contains valuable antibodies called immunoglobulins. And that lamb or goat kid only has a 24 hour window in which they can actually absorb those and utilize them. Now this lamb here or any lamb that you know will not be able to make its own antibodies for quite some time. The body has to kind of get revved up and going. So it's gonna borrow its immunity from its mom. It's gonna get the passive immunity is what we call it. It's gonna come in the form of those immunoglobulins in the colostrum and he's gonna borrow that immunity until he can develop his own. The third thing that we need with our babies is they need to be able to maintain their own body temperature. So that means that the baby should be at that magic about 101 or a little bit higher body temperature. It should be able to maintain that in order to maintain its bodily functions. If that temperature drops below the sweet spot, the animal starts to go hypothermic, they will not eat and everything tends to fall apart. When it comes to kids and lambs, Really in a nutshell, if things fall apart, if things don't work, you're gonna be dealing with one of those three instances. Either the animal isn't able to maintain its body temperature, it is not able to get colostrum or nutrition off of its mom, or it is not able to move. It's not able to maneuver its way uh, to where it needs to go in order to nurse. Now, mom has a lot to do with this as well. As you can imagine, mom can assist the baby. Mom can stand for the baby in order for it to nurse. Mom produces colostrum. Mom looks after the baby. So basically, mom's job is to take care of the baby and make sure that it can do all those things within reason. Obviously, mom can only do so much. Baby can do so much. They work together as a team and they make the magic happen. So in today's video, Video, what I want to show you is how to best process your lambs and goat kids in order to make sure that you maintain those three functions. So we're going to go through those step by step. If you follow these steps, things will go well for you. If you choose to deviate and do other things, they may not. Now keep in mind, we're not gonna cover the nuts and bolts of the veterinarian side of this today. That is to say, what do I do when this goes wrong? What do I do when that goes wrong? That's something that you'll want to watch our other videos and learn about. This is just basic care that you're going to wanna do in this order when it comes to your lambs and goat kids when they are normally functioning like this one. This one's healthy, we wanna keep it that way. First thing I wanna do is I wanna actually check this mom and I wanna make sure that she's making enough milk and she's making colostrum. Now there's a few ways that we can do that and I'm gonna show you how to do that rather easily. The old fashioned way is to simply stand her up, take your hand and milk her by hand. I don't need to show you how to milk by hand. That's something that you can watch a video on or figure out yourself. What I wanna do is I wanna show you two ways that you can do it today that's gonna make things a lot easier for you. So we're gonna get a halter together, we're gonna get her haltered and we're gonna draw some milk off of her and some colostrum and show you what that looks like. All right, so this is Sally. Sally was a show sheep once upon a time. She's one of our better mothers, so this is gonna be easier. This can be an athletic event, but basically, you know, I showed you how to make this in the shop. Basically, I've got a 60 ml syringe here and we're gonna use this to draw milk off of our moms. Now, in order to do this, you're actually gonna need to remove the plunger and cut off this end. The reason for that is, is we're gonna take the manufactured end this one is gonna go up against the mom and this is where our plunger is gonna go. Don't use a power tool for crying out loud. That would be a horrible, horrible idea. Use a very small tooth saw. You wanna go be able to cut through this thing slowly and it's gonna take you some time to go through this thing. But essentially this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna cut through it and cut this end off smooth. You can attempt to do this with a knife, but I do not recommend it. Very, very fine tooth saw and the reason 
reason for that is, is you want this to be uh, smooth and it will shatter if you try to go at it with a heavy tooth saw. All right, so I have cut this off. I'm just gonna kind of smooth off some of the edges. But essentially, we've created a tube with two open ends. Now, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to mess up my plunger too much. So I want to make sure that any burrs or anything that I have on this edge are cleaned off. And then I'm going to place my plunger tip back in just like this. And what this does is this gives me a suction device that I can now put up against that U and I can pull back. Now I, you have to draw up enough headspace in order to have room for the teat to go down in there. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this over her teat just like that. And you can see I got enough headspace in there. Then I pull down and pull a suction on that teat. And once it gets going, you can see that colostrum filling up in there. You don't have to pull super hard, just enough to get a vacuum. And you can see that colostrum filling up in there. Now, when you want to release, you just push back on the plunger and that's it. Now I don't want to draw, I'm not going to draw a lot off of her because I don't want to waste that colostrum. This is like- right, Now this is our utterly easy. So we've gone from having this contraption to this. This is actually, I believe these are a hundred, hundred fifty dollars for the whole deal. But I'll tell you, uh, in my opinion, they're worth it. They actually break down rather easily to clean out. You have different size sleeves that you can use for different size animals. It's pretty easy to take apart and clean. Sleeve just fits in there. This device, fits in here and essentially it's a hand powered vacuum pump. You're gonna have to have a cup with an actual seal on it and that will screw in here. Now, what's going on here? Well, essentially when I squeeze, it's pulling a vacuum into this. So this goes up against the animal. This is where it's collected. And as I hand pump, the pressure is coming down through the canister and up through that tube. So when I push this up against the animal, as long as it's sealed correctly, it'll actually draw that fluid down. The fluid will fall down in here and collect in the canister. I can just take it off, put my lid on it, and I'm good to go. Now you notice this does have a unique O-ring on it, and that O-ring is required because as I said, the suction is up in here going down into the canister and then up through the tube. If you don't have a good suction on the canister itself, it won't pull a suction off of the animal and you won't be able to uh you won't be able to actually draw off the mom. So this is more, you know, for getting larger amounts of milk. Maybe you got a mom that's lopsided. Maybe you got a baby that was ill and it can't nurse on its own. This is just an easy one that you can keep in your pocket. And this just simply allows you to pull a test to see if mom's producing. This works on the same basic principle. I'm gonna pump this and you can see the colostrum's already filling this up. Okay, now just turn it, break the seal and we're done. Again, I don't want to waste her colostrum because her baby's getting that colostrum, but that shows me that she is making colostrum, the teats are, strip, are stripped appropriately, and we are good to go. If you're not doing a lot, this is by far the easiest, cheapest, and most effective way to go. This, hundred and something dollars, love it, works great, but it might not be right for you. So this is Jack. Jack is doing well. Again, he is actually shivering a little bit because he just ate. And you will notice that with them, that they will shiver a little bit after they eat. I want to detour really quick and talk about healthy behaviors of lambs and goat kids. When they stand up, you're naturally going to see them shake a little bit and shake off like a dog. That is normal, natural behavior for your lambs and goat kids, going from a resting to an up and at them position. If you notice that they're hunched up, they're not standing up and shaking and doing things like that, uh, that's a sign that there's something going wrong. Now, now, when it comes to Jack here, we are going to treat his umbilicus. And Joss, if you flip him up, we can kind of see his umbilicus. So we're, we're going to treat his umbilicus. Normally, that would involve us trimming off this end. So this is how we found him out this morning. We're going to take a pair of scissors here, and we are going to uh, just clip this dead end off of this umbilicus. You don't need to clip it too close, but you need to clip it close enough that you get that dead end off. I just like to use a wound spray. Now, back in the day, we used to use iodine. The problem with iodine 
iodine is, is iodine has a relatively high vapor pressure. And unless you keep it sealed up correctly, and I mean like with a lid tight on it, it actually evaporates and it loses its potency relatively quickly. I'm just not a huge fan of iodine. I think it makes a mess and it doesn't do anything much more than making your fingers turn orange. Mom's a little excited and that's normal for her. This is not my invention. I get beat up about this a lot. This comes from Pipestone Veterinary. Uh, we're gonna show you how to mix this up in the shop, but essentially this is uh, 0.25 of selenium, one milliliter of penicillin and one milliliter of CDT. And we're giving this to the animal to protect it from tetanus and to also protect it from navel ill. That's what the penicillin is. Navel ill is a bacteria that can actually get in through the umbilicus, can cause fever, diarrhea, can cause them to go off a of feed, and it can also affect the front shoulders and cause massive destruction to the front shoulder joints. We tend to see this a little bit more in goats than in lambs, but it's still something that we do with each and every animal. So I've got my three ingredients here that I'm going to use. I'm gonna use CD&T vaccine, I'm gonna use penicillin and I am in this case I'm using BOCI because I know that we are selenium deficient in our area and I think it helps to give them an extra boost. Now you will notice if you go to your vet this is a prescription if you go to your veterinarian and you ask them for selenium and vitamin E they may reach for this. This is Mucy. You notice one milligram per milliliter in this one this is five milligrams per milliliter so this would be something you would use for cattle or larger animals do not use mucy if you use mucy the animal is going to overdose and they're going to die so we are going to use 0 0.25 milliliters of the boci we are going to use one milliliter of penicillin and one milliliter of cdt now most of your cdt containers are going to be single use cdt containers and we've been over this before but it bears repeating if you have a single use and you're going to use it multiple times, this doesn't have anything in it that's going to keep it bactericidal or bacteriostatic even for that matter. And so what you're going to want to do is just draw up a couple of mLs of penicillin, inject it into your CDT container, give it a shake, put it back in the fridge, and it'll last you for as long as you need it to. We include the 0.25 of BOCI in here, which is vitamin E and selenium, because we want to make sure that it has enough selenium. So selenium, is a nutrient that is in the ground, uh, comes in plants uh, in your area. In our area, we are a little bit of uh, selenium deficient. Selenium is basically a, a powerful antioxidant that helps in muscle development. Vitamin E and vitamin C are good carriers for that. So I just gave him that subcutaneously. What you'll see in most selenium is it's paired with a vitamin E. And again, that vitamin E protects that selenium and allows it to last longer in order for the body to adequately absorb it. Selenium is a powerful antioxidant and it is also a cofactor in a antioxidant in the body called glutathione. So that's why it is very important. You can read about this in things like white muscle disease. So we've protected this animal from the bacterial infection and we've given a little bit of boost to help with that mobility that we talked about. We've checked mom for milk. We've given him his shots. We've taken care of his navel. Now we are going to check him and I wanna check his body temperature. If you're ever curious if a lamb is being able to appropriately maintain its body temperature, the easiest way to do that is to take your finger and put it in their mouth. Now, when you put your finger in their mouth, two things are gonna happen. They're gonna have a little bit of a suckle reflex and that mouth is going to be nice and warm. If you put your finger in the mouth, you have no suckle reflex and the mouth is cold, that tells you that that animal is hypothermic. Then you need to take precautions, get them in, get them warm. Now that we've processed the baby, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go over to our lambing and kidding pen. 
Uh, Lamine and Kidding pens are a smaller pen that's about oh, five foot by eight foot or four foot by eight foot, six foot by eight foot that allows mom and baby to have time to bond. This gives us two benefits. It is we can watch the baby, make sure that the baby's doing good. And the other thing is we can watch mom, make sure mom's doing good. Sometimes your first time moms and babies need some time to um, get used to one another. The problem that you will notice sometimes too is you've got moms that want all the babies. To make this less of an athletic event, what we do is we normally will halter our moms and we will hold the baby in front of them. Even the wildest mom usually, if you hold the baby directly in front of them and walk, the mom will want to follow that baby. So let's head on over to the lambing and kidding pen, get them in place and we can talk a little bit. <laughs> So this is a lambing pen. This is where they'll stay for about the first about the first 24 hours of life. Now some moms will require more time, some require less depending. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have nice clean bedding in here. Food for mom, just to help her recover. And then we like to use blue light. Uh, blue light is like Gatorade pretty much for sheep and goats. I believe you can find it on Premier One. We'll include a link below for that. And we just add it to their water. It just gives them extra electrolytes. So we know that this mom's doing good, but in case you know it's questionable about the mom and how she's doing, this gives you an easy way to keep an eye on them. It gives them a way to get used to one another, their sounds and their smells. Uh, and we can actually sit back and watch and make sure that the baby is indeed uh, getting the nutrition that it needs off the mom. Again, top three things that you need to do, maintain the body temperature, get the feed that it needs from mom, and make sure that they're able to mobilize. If you can't meet those three things, then you're going to need to get someone else involved if you don't know what you're doing, or you will lose your baby. The last tidbit of information that I am going to give you is this. Sheep and goats, there is no, let's wait until tomorrow, let's see how it's doing. If the baby's not doing well, if mom's not doing well, you need to get involved immediately. The longer you wait, the more problems you are going to have. I'm Tim from Lonessa Farm, specialty in heirloom livestock. Thanks for joining us again today, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.